Hi, students let's start the third part of biological classification. In the previous video we saw the kingdom Monarago and see the first part of biological classification for a better understanding of this video. Now start from kingdom Protista. All single cell eubacteria are placed under protista. Eubacteria means those bacteria have a nucleus in the cytoplasm. In the next chrysophytes, dinoflagellates, eugalnoids, slime, and protozoans are placed under protista. Let's start from cryophytes. This group includes diatoms and golden algae, demids. Diatoms is a special type of algae. These are found in marine as well as freshwater environments. These are microscopic and flow with water flow henes also called plankton. Most of the team are photosynthetic. Photosynthesis is a process used by plants and other organisms to convert light energy into chemical energy that, through cellular respiration. Diatoms have the cell wall form two thin overlapping shells which fit together tightly. These walls are full fill of silica and walls are indestructible. The diatoms have left behind a large amount of cell wall deposits in their habitat, this habitat is known as diatomaceous earth. Diatoms are the chief producers in the oceans, also known as the pearl of the ocean. Let's start the first part of cryophytes. Dinoflagellates. These are mostly marine and photosynthetic. They appear yellow, green, brown, or blue, etc. Depending upon pigment present in their cells. The cell wall of dinoflagellates has stiff cellulose plates, this characteristic feature of dinoflagellates. Most of them have flagella, one lies longitudinally and the other is transversally in between wall plates. Some red dinoflagellates undergo rapid multiplication, they make the sea appear red also no known as red tides. For example, goniolax. These red tides released some toxins leads to the death of a large number of other marine water animals. i.e. fish. Let's start the second part of cryophytes. Eugalnoids. These are mainly found in stagnant water means in stable water. They don't have a cell wall, they have the protein-rich layers called pellicle, which make their body flexible. They also have two flagella, one is short and the other is long. They are photosynthetic in presence of sunlight, and in absence of sunlight they act like heterotrophs, these organisms are also called mixotrophic organisms. For example, Euglena. Let's start the third part cryophytes. Slime molds. These are mainly saprophytic protists, which means they eat or decomposers dead organisms. Under suitable conditions they form an aggregation called plasmodium, and in unfavorable conditions plasmodium divide into fruiting bodies bearing spore at their tips. The spore possess true walls, they very resistant and live for many years, and the spores are dispersed by air currents. Let's start the fourth and last part of cryophytes. Protozoans. All protozoans are heterotrophs means depend upon others for food. And always lives as predators or parasites. There are four groups of protozoans. 1. Amoeboid protozoans. 2. Flagellated protozoans. 3. Ciliated protozoans. 4. Sporozoans. Amoeboid protozoans. These organisms live in freshwater, seawater, or moist soil. They move and capture their prey by putting pseudopodia in amoeba. Some of them are ant amoeba is a parasite. Flagellated protozoans. The members of this group are either free-living or parasitic. They have flagella. Some parasites cause diseases such as sleeping sickness. Ciliated protozoans. These organisms have thousands of cilia present on their body hence they are free-living, aquatic organisms. They also have cavity that opens outside the cell surface. X paramecium. Sporozoans. This type of organisms are divers, they have infected spore-like stage in their life cycle. The most well-known bad or notorious is plasmodium, malarial parasite, which cause malaria. So students we end here the kingdom protista. We start the kingdom fungi in another video, so keep studying and best of luck for your exams, and please like and sub the video.